Welcome to Unit 2 in Wildlife of North America. This is my brief introduction. Um, unit 2 includes the orders Zed Arthra, Insectivora, and Choroptera. These are wildly different organisms. Um, tend to be similar in that they all do consume insects and small um, invertebrates. So in that respect, that's basically all they have in common. But they're all really interesting. The order Xenarthra includes the armadillos, and there's only one species of armadillo in North America. It is the nine-banded armadillo. And armadillos are pretty cool, funky organisms. They have these dermal plates on the outside that form a hard carapace. They're related actually to anteaters, and if you look, the snout really looks kind of anteater-esque, if you will. They're soft on the other parts, under parts. Um, they, are, they are burrowing, so they are fossorial. They are not cold tolerant, so their range is restricted by um, the cold. Uh, their fertilized eggs have delayed implantation, and this is a phenomenon that we're going to see more than once in this course. And you might think about why this might be a positive adaptation. Their specific gravity, 1.06, is nearly the same as water, so they can actually walk across a stream on the bottom of the stream although they can also float and apparently, I guess, swim, because they can pump air up underneath their carapace, so they'll float. Um, back to fertilization. Once implanted, the egg splits into four identical embryos. So with each birth, there are just four offsprings, offspring, and they are genetically identical. I have no idea why that might be adaptive. Maybe some of you have some ideas. Um, they are the only organism other than humans who can harbor the leprosy bacterium. So people are usually told to stay away from them. And in Florida, actually, I don't know about other parts of the United States, but in Florida, the um, armadillos do have the leprosy bacterium. But generally, this is generally not a danger to humans because it's not an easy disease to, to contract, not very contagious, and you don't usually see a lot of armadillos, and you don't necessarily want to handle them even if you see them because they are a little ugly. All right, they were used in medical research to grow the leprosy bacteria because it is very fastidious bacteria to grow. It's very difficult to grow it. And so they have used armadillos for this purpose. Next are the insectivora. Obviously these are insect-eating mammals. They um, actually eat grubs, earthworms, uh, some plant material, fungi. They are phosphorial. This includes the shrews and moles. Um, they look a lot like mice, um, especially the shrews, but they both look a lot like mice. But they tend to be short-tailed and have a very elongated snout, very small eyes, and no or not very obvious ears. This helps them because they burrow, um, and that, those things don't get in the way. They don't have very good eyesight, but they have some extraordinary other sensory development that you'll read about in uh, a paper that I want you to read. Um, most of these guys are fossorials, terrestrial. Some are actually aquatic or actually semi-aquatic. Um, you should pay attention to their adaptations for burrowing because they're highly adapted for burrowing. The shrews are the smallest of all mammals. The pygmy shrew is the smallest of all shrews. Um, 
They have a very high metabolism. Uh, they do not hibernate. They are active day and night. They do rest, kind of go into like a little torpor state for periods of time. And I want, to, I want to make sure that you read about the adaptation to behavior of the North American water shrew. And I'm going to go back to that in a second. Uh, on the bottom is a mole. I think, judging from the short length of the tail, that this is a hairy-tailed mole by the dark, the dark kind of black coloration. It was light underneath. I actually took this picture this summer. I was out walking. I actually along the roadway I saw this one. I live on a dirt road. Moles tend to be larger than shrews, but they're not quite as active. They have very highly developed fore feet for burrowing. Um, they eat insects and a lot of earthworms. Um, they, many of them eat earthworms. Let me see if I can get out of this. I may need to go through this first. I, I'll go to this and I'll come back to the, uh, the thing that I want you to read. Um, bats, Chiroptera, the only true flying mammal. This is a picture of a hoary bat. Uh, hoary bats are fairly common in the Northeast. Uh, hoary by being white, kind of frosted. See the whitish around it. Um, the these bats, they're um, most of the bats, bats in North America are vesper telonid bats. Um, they have good sense of echolocation and they are primarily eat insects. Bats do have eyes, functional eyes. They aren't blind. Most of the ones in North America are colonial, not solitary. And most have delayed fertilization and implantation. Many of them hibernate. They're in the north urban areas. And in those that hibernate, the young are born often in the hibernaculum or cave or location where they hibernate. Some bats do eat fruit and some do eat suck blood. Some in the southern United States and Mexico, there are some vampire um, bats. The assignment this week is to participate in a discussion on whether or not bats are beneficial or harmful. I expect you to do research, like you did for the first unit. And the title of your primary post should be, a spe be specific to your topic. For example, bats are beneficial because they eat harmful insects. Um, you need to contribute a primary post by Sunday night. Primary posts, usually good primary posts, run about 500 words. I don't insist on a word number, but I'm telling you that usually there'll be about 500 words with citations and a list of references, probably at least five references, good references, good legitimate sources of information. Um, in the course learning guide, there is information called, I think it's research and writing, where I talk about good sources of information and go back to that. That's in the, um, the part that's before Unit 1. Um, you have to make two posts. The secondary post can be shorter, and it's due before the end of the discussion on Tuesday night. I will be returning your library research by on this Thursday, and you'll have a, cha you have a chance to redo it, to correct it, um, if you want to have it regraded. Okay, now I want to go exit and I want to go to the course here and you're seeing that as this as I see it so it may not be quite the same. But in the Unit 2 Learning Guide um, I have the tasks for this unit and as part of that, and then I have the discussion guide. So you have a, information about how to do the discussion. 
But what I want to point out to you, to you is that I want you to read an article about the North American water shrew in Natural History Magazine. And if you go here and put in water shrew, which I have already done today, just to make sure it works. Is it going? Oh, there we are. Now we're going. And the article is No Taming the Shrew. And it is a fascinating look at the North American water sh shrew and how it does what it does. I mean, it really is a fascinating look at these really interesting animals. So make sure that uh, you do read this article. I would not be surprised if you have a question, an essay question, on this on a quiz in the next couple of weeks. So I wanted to let you know about that. So the discussion guide is here. Talk about here. Here is the grading rubric for it, for the main, the primary post. Um, as always, the detailed outlines are in the content guide. The video introduction I'm doing right now will be here. And here are the outlines, the detailed outlines. And I have a background on rabies and bats to give you, if you don't know, to, you know, about rabies and the vaccine, some information that will help you out there. If you're talking about it in terms of rabies, bats and things like rabies. All right. If you have any questions, as always, let me know. In the next day, I'll have your um, library research done and back to you, and I will get started on the essay questions from the quiz from Quizmail. Later.